welcome to this edition of news today where we break down the day's top stories with precision and clarity without delay let's explore the headlines first gopi chand thotakura has become the first indian space tourist the international atomic energy agency has issued an urgent call for vigilance against the theft of nuclear materials f16 fighter jet controlled by artificial intelligence pilot operated experimentally european union has launched investigation into meta platforms over child safety World Hydrogen Summit 2024 held in Rotterdam, Netherlands. World Bank released a report titled Water for Shared Prosperity. Let us begin with the very first news. Gopi Chand Thotakura has become the first Indian space tourist. Hailing from Andhra Pradesh, Gopi Chand Thotakura was one of the six crew members selected for the suborbital space flight of Blue Origin's New Shepard 25 or NS25 mission. But what exactly is the NS25? It is a rocket system designed to take astronauts and research payloads past the Karman line, which lies nearly 100 kilometers above sea level and is considered the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and outer space. Taking a look at it from a broader context, space tourism refers to the commercial activity of sending private individuals to space for recreational, adventure, or leisure purposes. This emerging industry encompasses two types of space travel. suborbital spacecraft like the NS25 mission which take passengers just beyond the Karman line and orbital spacecraft which take passenger much further into the space the benefits of space tourism are multifaceted the production of advanced spacecraft necessary for these missions will help generate employment stimulate innovation and drive investment for instance nasa is assisting small businesses in developing technologies to advance space exploration climate research and more additionally Space tourism has the potential to raise public awareness of space science and its importance. However, space tourism also faces significant challenges. The high cost per seat which can be at least a million dollars remain a barrier to entry for many. Furthermore, there are concerns about the potential depletion of the ozone layer and an increase in harmful UV radiation on Earth's surface due to the emissions from space tourist activities. Moreover, the lack of responsibility and regulation to ensure the safety of passengers and the environment poses a significant challenge that needs to be addressed. In line with the growing interest in space tourism, India has taken steps to establish its presence in this emerging industry. The Gaganyaan mission aims to send astronauts to an orbit of 400 kilometers for a 3-day mission showcasing India's capabilities in human space flight. Additionally, the Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center or INSPACE has been established to facilitate the participation of private players in the space sector fostering innovation and entrepreneurship in this field in conclusion gopichand thotakura's achievement as the first indian space tourist represents a significant milestone in india's journey towards participating in the burgeoning space tourism industry moving on to our next news the international atomic energy agency has issued an urgent call for vigilance against the theft of nuclear materials This warning comes in the wake of IAEA's incident and trafficking database which reported 168 incidents by 31 states in the year 2023. But what exactly is the ITDB? Established in the year 1995, this database serves as a crucial repository of information on illicit trafficking and unauthorized activities involving nuclear and radioactive materials that have fallen outside of regulatory control. The challenges posed by nuclear material theft cannot be overstated. With the coexistence of terrorism and weapons of mass destruction, the risk of such materials falling into the wrong hands is elevated. Furthermore, nuclear theft can potentially fuel an arms race between nations. If we talk about the potential consequences, the improper dispersal or exposure to radioactive materials can result in injury, loss of life, and environmental catastrophes. Moreover, nuclear theft may promote transnational organized crime, serving as a catalyst for illicit activities such as drug trafficking, money laundering, and illegal arms trade. In response to these grave threats, the IAEA plays a pivotal role in promoting peaceful uses of nuclear energy and preventing its use for any military purpose. Established in the year 1957 as an autonomous organization, The IAEA reports annually to the United Nations General Assembly and the UN Security Council. The IAEA's functions encompass encouraging and assisting research, development and practical applications of atomic energy for peaceful purposes. It also provides independent international verification to ensure that governments abide by their commitments to the peaceful use of nuclear technology. 
Additionally, the IAEA enhances national, regional and international capacities to respond to nuclear and radiological incidents. To further strengthen global efforts against nuclear proliferation, several treaties have been established. The Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons Treaty is the only binding treaty with the goal of disarmament by nuclear weapon states. The Missile Technology Control Regime aims to limit the risk of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, while the Nuclear Supplier Groups works to prevent nuclear exports for commercial and peaceful purposes from being used to manufacture nuclear weapons. Furthermore, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons adopted by the United Nations bans the use, possession, testing and transfer of nuclear weapons. In conclusion, the IAEA's call for vigilance against nuclear material theft underscores the grave consequences of such activities and the urgent need for concerted global efforts to combat this threat. In our next news, in a groundbreaking experiment, the United States has demonstrated a F-16 fighter jet controlled by an artificial intelligence pilot dubbed as Vista. The integration of AI-based technologies in the defense sector has opened up a realm of possibilities ranging from training and surveillance to logistics, cybersecurity, and even advanced military weaponry, robotics, etc. But what makes AI so significant in the realm of defense? For starters, warfare systems empowered by AI can make operations more efficient and less reliant on human input. The ability of AI to make autonomous decisions reduces the chance of human error, a critical factor in high-stakes combat situations. Moreover, AI can assist humans in making precise and appropriate warfare decisions, providing valuable insights and analysis. And let's not forget the potential for AI-powered military robots to undertake operations, ultimately saving human lives on the front lines. However, the adoption of AI in defense is not without its challenges. Ethical and legal concerns arise, particularly regarding the potential for autonomous weapon systems to make life or death decisions without human intervention. Additionally, the vast amounts of data required to train AI systems can become a vulnerability in warfare scenarios. The proliferation of AI technology, especially in military contexts, also raises concern about its potential spread to non-state actors and rogue nations. Turning our attention to India's approach to this emerging technology, the country has taken significant strides. In 2019, the Defense AI Project Agency and the Defense AI Council were established. Furthermore, in 2022, the government published a list of 75 priority projects related to using AI for defense applications. The Defense Research and Development Organization has dedicated laboratories such as the Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics in Bengaluru focused on application-oriented research in AI. As the world continues to grapple with the implications of AI in the defense sector, one thing is clear, the future of warfare is inseparably linked to the advancements in this cutting-edge technology. Moving on to our next news. The European Union has launched investigation into meta platforms over child safety. The investigation on meta platforms like Facebook and Instagram has been initiated as they may have breached the Digital Services Act or DSA. Enacted just last year, the DSA holds digital companies liable for addressing issues such as disinformation, shopping scams, child abuse and other online harms. The investigation against Meta platform stems from concerns regarding the effectiveness of their age verification tools. Users are meant to be at least 13 years old to use Facebook or Instagram, but there are fears that the platforms could exploit the weaknesses and inexperience of children and simulate addictive behavior. Furthermore, there are concerns that children could be exposed to increasingly disturbing content. Turning to the broader impact of social media on children, cyberbullying and online harassment are significant concerns that can lead to emotional distress, anxiety and even depression. Additionally, excessive screen time can replace important activities like cuddling, which releases the bonding hormone oxytocin and helps children manage stress. Prolonged screen time can also contribute to reduced physical activity, poor sleep patterns and health-related issues like obesity and diabetes. Moreover, social media can distort children's sense of reality, making it difficult for them to distinguish what is normal and what is not. However, it is worth noting that social media can also enhance creativity, allowing children to express themselves, share ideas and showcase their talents through various mediums such as art, writing or video content. In response to these challenges, the Indian government has taken several initiatives to protect children online. Section 67B of the Information Technology Act 2000 provides stringent punishment for publishing, transmitting or viewing child sexual abuse material online. 
Furthermore, the Information Technology Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code Rules 2021 empower users to hold social media platforms accountable for their safety. Additionally, the recently proposed Digital Personal Data Protection Act 2023 mandates verifiable consent from legal guardians before processing the personal data of a child. In conclusion, the European Union's investigation into meta platforms highlights the urgent need to address the potential risks and harms posed by social media to children. Moving on to the next news, World Hydrogen Summit 2024 held in Rotterdam, Netherlands. The summit, organized by the Sustainable Energy Council in partnership with the Netherlands government, witnessed a significant Indian presence. The Ministry of New and Renewable Energy set up an Indian pavilion showcasing the country's advancements in green hydrogen technology. But what exactly is green hydrogen? Let's break it down. Green hydrogen is defined as hydrogen produced by splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen using renewable electricity sources like solar or wind-powered photocatalysis, electrocatalysis of water, etc. The uses of green hydrogen are manifold. It can serve as a fuel for internal combustion engines. A blend of hydrogen and natural gas can generate heat with lower emissions than using natural gas alone. Moreover, green hydrogen can power hydrogen fuel cells to run vehicles, offering a clean transportation solution. Transitioning to this hydrogen economy is a top priority for India. The Bureau of Energy Efficiency has been designated as the nodal authority for accrediting agencies to monitor, verify, and certify green hydrogen production projects. Speaking of initiatives in 2023, India launched the National Green Hydrogen Mission to achieve an ambitious target of 5 million metric tons of green hydrogen production capacity by 2030. Under this mission, the Strategic Interventions of Green Hydrogen Transitioning Program provides financial incentives for manufacturing electrolyzers and producing green hydrogen. But that's not all. India has also launched a dedicated portal for the National Green Hydrogen Mission, serving as one-stop information hub. Additionally, the Department of Science and Technology has initiated Hydrogen Valley Innovation Clusters to foster innovation and promote a green hydrogen ecosystem within the country. Now, let's take a moment to understand hydrogen itself. It's a colorless, odorless, traceless and flammable gas. Interestingly, it's the most abundant element in the universe and the third most abundant on the surface of our planet. Its properties resemble to those of alkali metals and halogens. The push towards a hydrogen-based fuel economy is driven by India's need for an alternative fossil fuels and to meet its national energy security goals. It's also a crucial step towards reducing emissions intensity by 45% by 2030 and cutting the country's massive import bill for crude oil and natural gas. However, the transition is not without its challenges. Lack of infrastructure for production, transportation storage and the inherent flammability of hydrogen coupled with high costs are significant concerns that need to be addressed. Despite these hurdles, India's commitment to green hydrogen is evident and the country is taking significant strides towards a sustainable energy future. Moving ahead in the news, World Bank released a report titled Water for Shared Prosperity. The report was released at the 10th World Water Forum in Bali, Indonesia. But what exactly does the World Bank mean by shared prosperity? It defines shared prosperity as boosting prosperity, particularly for poorest, to achieve more equitable societies. Let's look at the key findings of the report. The report defines four interconnected building blocks for prosperity, health and education, jobs and income, peace and social cohesion, and the environment. However, population growth, urbanization, and climate change are causing a disparity in global water access, threatening these very foundations. In a startling revelation, the report states that in 2022, a staggering 197 million people lacked access to safe drinking water, while 211 million lack basic sanitation facilities. Globally, about 450 million people live in high poverty and low water access hotspots, further exacerbating the issue. The situation is particularly dire in low-income countries, where access to water services is available in less than half of schools. Inadequate and unsafe water can have far-reaching consequences like affecting early childhood development. Moreover, climate change is fueling extreme weather events like floods and droughts, disrupting children's learning, damaging crops, and increasing conflict and more. In response to these challenges, the report offers recommendations for inclusive water security. It calls for improving resilience to extreme hydroclimatic risks by setting up early warning systems and enhancing water resources development and allocation through nature-based solutions and water accounting methods. 
Additionally, the report emphasizes the need for safely managed water supply and sanitation by reforming water information systems to target pro-poor populations. Hosting this crucial dialogue is the World Water Forum. It is held every three years and co-hosted by World Water Council and a host country. Its objectives are to raise the importance of water on political agenda and support discussions towards resolving international water issues. As the world grapples with the ever-increasing demand for water and the challenges posed by climate change, events like the World Water Forum and reports like Water for Shared Prosperity serve as a wake-up call for collective action. The place in news for today is Iran with its capital Tehran. It is in the news as recently Iran president dies in helicopter crash. Talking about its political features, it shares land borders with Armenia, Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan in the north, Afghanistan and Pakistan in the east, Iraq in the west and Turkey in the northwest. It shares its maritime borders with Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar and Saudi Arabia. Moreover, its surrounding water bodies are Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman. If we talk about its geographical features, its highest peak is Mount Damavant in Albo's mountain range. It is also the highest volcano in the Middle East. Its major rivers are Dez, Karke, Tarun and Deala. Natural resources like oil and natural gas, coal, chromium, copper, iron ore, lead, manganese, zinc and sulfur are found in abundance in Iran. As we conclude today's main news, let's have a look at some quick updates. The Supreme Court has set aside the furlough extension of double murder convict. The furlough system is defined by the Prisons Act of 1894. It is given in cases of long-term imprisonment. International Criminal Court or ICC prosecutor seeks arrest warrant for Israel's Prime Minister and Hamas leaders. ICC is a permanent international court established to investigate, prosecute and try individuals accused of committing crime of genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes and crime of aggression. Sri Lankan golden bagged frog has been rediscovered after 200 years in India at Kondinya Wildlife Sanctuary. It lies in the Kuppam and Palamane ranges of Chittur district, Andhra Pradesh. It is the only sanctuary in Andhra Pradesh known for harboring Asian elephants. According to a study, baobab trees endemic to Madagascar reached Africa and Australia around 12 million years ago. Baobab trees are long-lived deciduous small to large trees from 20 to 100 feet tall with broad trunks and compact tops. The Consumer Affairs Ministry seeks public feedback on draft regulations for Doppler radar equipment used for measuring vehicle speeds. The Doppler radar used the Doppler effect to gather velocity data. According to a new study, Venus is losing water much faster than previously thought. Venus is the nearest planet to Earth and second from the Sun. It is also the brightest planet in the night sky. A rare hemiparasitic terrestrial plant called Lushayorum has been found in Fangpui National Park of Mizoram. Lushai Uram is named after Lushai tribe of Mizoram. Lushai tribe comes under the Koki Chin group of tribes. The Manipur government has collaborated with different organizations to protect Manipuri Pony, also known as Methi Sagol. They are one of seven recognized horse and pony breeds of India. They are of short height, however known for their unique stamina, agility, intelligence, speed and more. Before we sign off, let's challenge your understanding in today's installment of Test Your Knowledge. We appreciate your company. We hope you found this episode of News Today engaging. For the solution to today's quiz and to access the PDF version of News Today, remember to visit the provided links in the description.